Okay, perfect. I guess we can move on. So far, the only metric that we have been looking at was the accuracy of our neural networks. There is this question, is your neural network actually calibrated? And I'm gonna tell you an exact definition of that. And let's assume that being calibrated is a good thing, which actually is a good thing. It turns out that modern neural networks that we are coming up with them these days, they are no longer well calibrated. They are gonna be highly accurate, but they are not calibrated. Here is an indication of that. If you don't understand this figure, don't worry, because the lecture is about you understanding this figure. LONET is from 1998 on uh, MNIST data. You see that this blue and the red and this line are lying on top of each other. It means that LONET was well calibrated, while ResNet from 2016 is not. There is some gap between these blue curve and the y equals to x line. But what are you actually plotting here? What am I actually showing? Let's go into the math and then try to understand what that is, what calibration means and why is it a good thing. You have some input from some input space. That's your image. You have some labels. Maybe you have 10 labels. You have some ground truth di distribution and only nature knows about this distribution. We don't see it. We can only sample from it. That's gonna be our data. This is the joint distribution between X and Y, which is if you know the distribution on your images, you can condition on them, use the conditional distribution to give you the joint distribution. But we don't see it. We see that through data. This is an abstract concept. You have some neural network. Your neural network not only is outputting its predicted class, maybe some integer from one up until capital K, but it's also predicting the probability for a probability distribution, or it's actually the corresponding probability for that particular prediction. How probable is that this image corresponds to a number three? Y is gonna be number three, P is gonna be the third component of your probability distribution, X is the corresponding image. What does calibration mean? We would like P or P hat to be calibrated. What do we mean? We want it to represent a true probability of correctness. We want it to have a meaning. We don't want it to be meaningless. As an example, take this. Your neural network is gonna make 100 predictions on 100 images. And for each one of those, it's gonna tell you that I'm 80% sure that my prediction is correct. What do we expect? We want that out of those 100 cases, 80 of them to be correctly classified. Theoretically speaking, you want over your joint uh, probability distribution, this P is based on this pi. Uh, if your neural network is telling you that I'm this much sure, actually the probability that it is that many times correct is P. So that's what you want out of your method. And this is the idea of perfect calibration. And you can start to see that capital P hat corresponds to the prediction of your model. And this little P corresponds to the accuracy of your model. And that's why in these plots, you are plotting your confidence versus accuracy. So in the next lecture, we will try to uh, expand this term in terms of accuracy and confidence, something that, some things that are actually computable. They are not abstract. I think I'm gonna stop here. And for those of you who want to leave, you can leave. For those of you who have questions, I'll be around. I guess I'm a little um, still trying to work on why why don't we want just higher accuracy instead? What what's the drawback with a higher accuracy and lower confidence? So let's say you have a model that's gonna give you a prediction and it's gonna tell you that I'm looking at this image and it's a number two. But then at the same time, you want your model to be confident, to be telling you with confidence that my prediction is a two. Not only that, you want that confidence that your model is associated to that prediction to actually have a meaning. Otherwise, you cannot just use that uh, capital P hat that's coming out of your model. And what do we mean by it having a meaning? If your model makes 100 predictions, you want it to be 80% correct. And it's different from your model telling you that I'm 80% confident. So one of them is your model telling you, then it's 80% confident. 
The other one is actually you looking at the predictions of your model and your test data and counting the number of times that it was correct. And you want these two numbers to be as close as possible to each other. So we're basically adding the confidence as additional metric to test the model. Exactly. Because in the end of the day, you are putting this model in production and the whole series of uh, topics that we have been covering through visualization and understanding was about trying to build trust in the predictions of the model. You cannot just trust a model that's going to tell you the prediction is a number two. And then now we are asking why. Why are you saying that? How confident are you? Does your confidence that you're reporting, does it make sense? So we are asking tough questions, tougher questions from the model compared to accuracy. Yes, you should be accurate, but at the same time, the confidence that you're reporting to me should make sense. And the confidence that actually comes from historical predictions, right? Like if you, if in production, um, I'm pretty much collecting my, say my real-time predictions all the time, and I'm kind of adding up those results to, to be my, it's, it's not the training data or the validation, it's ac the actual real world data. Yes, exactly. That feeds into my confidence. And then I, I'm based on a long time experiment that I'm able to say, you know, I'm 90% I'm confident that this is going to be a, a class number two. Yes, so that's what we are gonna do to our models. At the same time, your model has an internal mechanism reporting confidence, it's confidence. And that's this probability that's coming out of your model. Okay. And, and then uh, it's exactly what you said. You want these two to match. Yeah, I think that makes some sense. Yeah. And if the confidence starts to um, drop to a low level, that's probably a, a time to start looking, making changes. Or at least uh, if your self-driving car is driving on a, on a road, and let's assume it's well calibrated, it's gonna look at the stop sign and it's gonna tell you, I'm not sure, is that a stop sign or is it not? Is it a yield sign? I'm not sure what to do. As soon as it reports that to you and you trust it, then you are gonna take control or the car is gonna hand over the control to you or it's just gonna pull over. So you're gonna have some safety mechanisms. That makes sense. It's like studying the distribution of predictions. It's a prediction of predictions. Yes. How, how good your prediction is. <laughs> exactly. How much do you trust yourself? Or how much do I trust the fact that you have this much confidence? Are you well calibrated or not? I know you're accurate. Are you, are you well calibrated? Yeah, I think I got, I got the point now. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. Bye.